Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's Jamie. I just want to say that I think prosecutorial discretion in terms of both the executive and the judicial, that is police and the prosecution, the prosecutors, has a, a very dangerous effect on liberty because when you have that type of discretion to selectively enforce laws, you can grow a huge amount of legislation that could be poorly worded or overbroad and politically enforced, uh, you know, selectively enforced for someone that, uh, you know, has an agenda, whether it's as small as a police officer's agenda or whether it's a legislator's agenda or whether it's a prosecutor's agenda. And what happens is, is that over time, uh, laws start to build up and people just don't notice because not everybody's affected who should be affected by it. You know, that's how come so many people could be said to be speeders and by virtue of going one mile per hour over, or even, you know, a fraction of that, they are in violation of the law. If every person who was speeding were to be held accountable legally all the way through from the uh, executive, please pull them over to the legislative, uh, uh, sorry, the, uh, the um, uh, what's it called, the prosecution's office, which is the judicial, you know, this is stemming from law created by the legislative, then so much ruckus would be created because people would realize, oh my gosh, like, it's impossible to follow the law. And that's what's happened, um, actually, well, over time with a lot of laws, is that technically everyone is a criminal. Everyone's committing a felony by some federal statute or, you know, is some type of civil in in infractor uh, through maybe the most common thing, you know, driving or maybe they're jaywalking. And what happens is, is when these things aren't enforced, um, it allows government to... Uh, grow big bodies of law and people just don't care because they're not being directly affected until it's too late and then it's selectively enforced. And what happens is, I believe, uh, based on um, praxeology, you know, study human action, is that when you have people who are being directly to the full letter of the law, being affected by the laws that are written, you have a huge amount of change very quick when those start affecting a lot of people. So, for example, a bunch of people started getting pulled over every time they sped or every time they went past the white line or stuff like that. Most everybody would have a ticket every day. Most people, pretty much, would have a ticket every day. Guarantee you that law would change very quickly. It would change possibly to be like, okay, well, zero to five, you know, over is, you know, not criminal and maybe like six to 10, you just can only get a warning or something of that nature. The laws would immediately change to reflect social norms. Um, and those social norms, you know, may not necessarily be moral or ethical by, based on a different type of system. However, they do suggest, um, when enforced that way, that people will react and respond accordingly and more in mass. There is much, uh, there is a greater incentive to uh, change and make better law or legislation because people are being directly affected by it in mass. And what happens is when you have things selectively enforced, that's how you can have. Um, you know, all these Fourth Amendment exceptions and stuff like that, because, you know, the the government often goes after um, poor people and minorities, and they may lack the number or political power to do something about it. And then soon enough, once, you know, white people start getting affected to our middle class, then it's suddenly a big ruckus. Oh, no, you know, what I mean, they're, they're, you know, trying to search my car without, a, without probable cause, they're trying to get my home without a warrant. And so lately, with all the um, mass media outlets that we have, and all the abilities to record stuff like that, uh, people are exposing a lot of corruption that happens with, you know, the legislative, judicial, and prosecutor, prosecutor uh, office uh, offices. And things are starting to change. But the truest change in terms of uh, policy would come through 100% enforcement of every law all the way to the T. And that what would happen is, is it would be very sick for a bit, but most everybody would have a civil infraction or, or be um, charged with a crime within a week. I guarantee you. Within a week everybody would have something going on. People would be living in total fear for their lives. They would realize, oh my gosh, we're in a police state with the amount of uh, laws there are, whether it's in the tax code or whether it's, you know, in the uh, civil ordinance code, building codes, you know, traffic codes, whatever it is. People would suddenly realize, oh boy, we are in a lot of trouble because everybody's a lawbreaker. And that means that anytime the government wants, uh, based on uh, jurisprudence from the Supreme Court, they can selectively enforce a law. And as long as you are truly breaking it, doesn't matter what the motivation is of the officer or the prosecutor, because as long as you've broken the law, they have all the legal rights to do that. And, you know, many attorneys have tried to argue, oh, well, it's selectively enforced, or, oh, you're just doing it because of race. And they say, no, as long as they truly did break the law, and that's the underlying issue, it's all fair game. Even if it's mostly black people who are arrested, 
So what? They all broke the law. And so that's what's happening uh, right now is we're starting to see a change in the culture. People are becoming more and more affected by the, the growing tyranny of laws, and they're getting caught up in this net, and it's caused a big stir among people, you know, whether it's the internet and issues with the internet and copyright or, you know, marijuana, things like that. It, the, the culture is starting to change where more and more people are getting affected and it's leading people to get involved. Now, closing with everything, I am presenting this from a concept of government and possibly other types of um, non-government bodies of law. Uh, I personally don't want government at all. Um, voluntarist, uh, ANCAP, non-archist, I don't, I don't wish to have a monopoly of force called government. Uh, however, for both the current state of what is and for consideration um, and other types of uh, creating forms of arbitration or types of, of jurisdiction, you know, private contracting, it's something to consider that everything should be enforced 100% of the T. And uh, when you have that discretion, that leads to tyranny because laws can grow, people have become unaware. And then once it, it gets to a certain point, people can be can just fall into the net of um, being picked on because of a certain attribute by police, they can be picked on for political reasons uh, by prosecutors, um, or you know, even worse, they decide to declare with, with all their might that they can and say, oh, that is the government, will be like, oh, look, you've allowed us to do all this stuff. We're gonna enforce you know, the worst, like martial law, because we have you know, case law behind us, and you know, the, your Fourth Amendment's nothing anymore since you know, we have all these exceptions. And people just aren't used to thinking about that because they're not affected by it on a daily basis since they're selective enforcement. So I just hope that's food for thought as to why I think uh, it's a horrible idea to have any sort of uh, discretion. It should just be 100% enforcement as humanly possible. And of course, that's going to clog up the system. <laughs> it's, it's impossible as it is. Of course, it's going to destroy the entire system. That'd be great. Uh, but it would also cause uh, people to have a pause and rethink what the laws are, how they're written, and who wrote them. Because the second that, you know, all that poop hits the fan, people are going to suddenly realize, oh, looks like everybody's a criminal under this current system. We're actually much closer to any dictatorship than any other, you know, mainline. There is a, you know, monarch or type of, you know, figure that is saying they're a dictator. I mean, you have that in America right now, but people are just not aware of it because it's selectively enforced. So take care, everyone, and I will talk to you all later.